I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right, let's get back to some Star Trek action. Hey, oh yeah, okay, never mind. I was like, what are these connectors for? Well, that's my Fliptronics board. I got all excited there. So what I typically do is like, take a really thorough look at the underside before I really tear into anything. I just noticed. Oh, let's get some light. We are missing one screw in the knocker assembly, but I wonder if somebody stole that screw for something else. Interesting. That ain't a thing, really. Um, so last night, I did do a little bit of... Uh, investigation and I just started to do a little bit more someone really wanted to mark this spot of the old tin can that was there which I removed which in fact did have two screws holding it there you can see the the holes in the bottom of the can for the screws it's uh, I don't know why there's so many extra sockets that I haven't figured out yet what is this? This looks like a homemade attempt at something. So, yeah, a few things to go over here. Let's see if we can, uh, if I can remember all of them. <clears throat> okay, for starters, I did notice a little bit of wonky wiring here on this pop bumper. I don't know what's going on there per se why this is tied into itself I think I'm not really sure that's something I'm gonna have to sort out uh, you know what I do think I think it just this here let's get this out of the way wire that is looped and tied into itself really just should be going to that switch there because you can see the other pop bumper switches have two wires going to them and this one like so red white so uh, I know why okay I figured it out they didn't have a soldering gun so this is just wrapped with no solder and you know why I know that <laughs> that is the same handiwork as whoever attached this wire to this lug hey look at that I just loop it on there and hope it's good so that is the same person's handiwork okay well that I can remedy both of those pretty easily I'm gonna have to check see if I have a Data East Flipper Rebuild Kit. Actually, I know I just bought some coil stops. So if I can change some sleeves, plungers, and links, then I might not need to buy an entire kit. Oh, although I think I remember one of these is a Williams Flipper Bat. Yeah, look at this. Data East. And Williams so you know if I wanted to be all symmetrical about things I could change the flipper bats could even go with some like if I'm gonna place an order I could go with something cool like ye gold I don't know we'll see whatever would suit the play field uh, okay so we looked at this in the previous video we are um, missing the bottom of our coil bracket. <laughs> Look at that. Good old electrical tape. And then this coil bracket, uh, the um, slingshot bracket. It did a, you know, decent job on that, I guess. But I'm gonna be placing an order for these. They ain't cheap. They're like 30 bucks US each, so that's going to be a bit of a hit. But I can't be leaving that crap looking like that. 
Okay, so then I remember in another previous video that we looked at the this electrical tape here. So I unwrapped this wire here. Same handy uh, workmanship there. So what I've come to conclude is that this used to be for this switch, which used to be for the auto launch mechanism. Yeah, for the auto launch. So I guess because it's part of the switch matrix, it had to be tied together. So I guess I'll just tidy that up. So I, I don't know. They went to quite extensive lengths to uh, quote unquote fix that issue. So to undo all that might be more trouble than it's worth. So I think I'm probably going to just leave it as is and stick with the plunger. But so what happens when you get multi-ball? I guess you have to just auto plunge your balls into play. Just kind of weird. Look at this. Super sticky too and it needs a new barrel spring. So I guess that will be the one side effect of this quote unquote fix is um, having to like launch your balls manually during a multi ball. But uh, man, to really unhack that, I don't think it's going to be worth the trouble. That is, if I even I can find all the correct parts. And if this isn't hacked up too bad, I mean, that would probably come off okay. I would, I think the, like I said, the housing and the button are available, but I think the, the metal bracket is what, is what I would be missing. I, I think Mark in City went through this with uh, his Rocky and Bullwinkle, because it was missing that entire stuff too, so. Maybe I'll, I think I feel like he did some sort of homemade bracket or something. So I'll have to uh, contemplate that. So, moving on. What else did I find? So it was the pop bumper thing. With the coil brackets, the flippers. Okay, then there's some more electrical tape up here. What do we think's going on here? Why is all this like that? Maybe I'll remove that and see what is going on there. If this switch is not doing anything, there's no actuator arm on it, so probably we'll just remove that because that's not necessary anymore. And yeah, there was something else. Oh yeah by checking everything thoroughly look what I found broken diode on a light bulb so easy fix there yeah so I like to just really thoroughly investigate and see what I can find oh yeah there's more someone did some sort of repair to the subway you see that it's like an extra piece of plastic of some sort, crazy glued to the uh, two halves of the subway. Looks like the job did the trick and the switches click and do what they're supposed to do, I think. Not until we get into switch test will we really know, but yeah, so there was a subway repair at one point. And this is what I dug up. I talked about this also in one of the other Star Trek videos is that I had another display I wanted to test. And I found it. Check this out. Tata East Star Trek New Old Stock. I don't know if that's really true. But why don't we bust out the um, knife get into this thing see what it looks like 
I mean, a couple things when looking at displays, you can often tell if it has been used by if there's any like burn in on the display. So we can look for that. We'll take a look and just see if it looks like uh, any indication of use. Um, it's a little bit of styrofoam. But, so it's actually pretty interesting that it's got the correct ROM, Star Trek, what do you know, revision A, what do I have in my machine? Oh, crap, the play field's up, let's uh, not worry about that right now, but we will check that. So, this side, mm, I don't really see. If it was new old stock, would it, it wouldn't have a ROM in it, right? Is that true? Okay, let's see what the other side looks like. Okay, oh look at this. This is not new old stock. See, there's the burn-in I was talking about. And you can see kind of like... Letters. I don't know what it, the letters say, but... So... What does it say? Good luck or something almost? 350,000, 350 million maybe. Anyway, I am thinking that that is not new old stock. But, it does look like burn-in, doesn't it? Yeah, so I guess the only thing we'll do is definitely test it out and see if it's working, but burn-in is tolerable. What is not is if it starts to go like gas out, then that uh, draws too much voltage on your power supply and cooks it. Um, and that's like the in first indications of your display going bad. It's when it starts to like have the corners starting to go dark and the lettering starting to like get glitchy. Sometimes it takes a minute to warm up, quote unquote, and show up fully. Those are signs of your display gassing out. Cause it's plasma gas in here and it slowly leaks out. Then you inhale some plasma, dude. I wonder what happens if you do inhale plasma. Um, anyway. Uh, that is where I'm at right now. The trans light, as you can see, I have out. It's a little dirty, so I'll give that a clean. But not too bad, all in all. So I'm going to putter around a little bit. And uh, if I find anything interested, I will let you know. Alright, what is the revision on my own display. Is that upside down? Yeah, let's uh, come around to the other side. What does this say? Trek <clears throat> display CP05 12-9-91 What is that? It doesn't really tell me a whole lot. Does it? doesn't say revision A or B or C, it just says Trek C105. Alright, we're going to have to look at uh, Internet Pinball Database, see what revisions are out there, but take a look. Kind of see similar burn-in. kind of see but that's fairly typical and normal it's not really that bad as long as it's not too 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 burn in some is worse than others but if either of those displays work you wouldn't even probably notice whatsoever so 
hopefully one of these two displays works we won't find out boards have been sent out so um, that has been done which also reminds me uh, me my opinion Shay was asking how this whole system works here in the back box now it probably let's see let's turn on the machine because I think <laughs> Out of everything that works, I think the, that light bulb in the back box is straight from the transformer. So I might be able to demonstrate how that works. Let's see. Do I get anything? No. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. The only thing that works with no boards is that. So what we got is see that bulb in there and then this backing here just keeps the light focused in the right direction and then look at this there's a piece of paper here uh oh i just snapped it a little bit it's a little brittle from being heated up for 30 years so the light is kind of enclosed and here's gearbox all right so that's going to be your thing that moves this is your relay that turns the gearbox on and off so let's see if we can make these guys teleport obviously i'm gonna have to do it manually which if i remember correctly you're not supposed to do it manually but that's the shenanigander way. Okay. I will try this, but basically there's two pieces of, like there's a glass here and a glass back there, plexiglass. And if you slide the plate over, each glass has these black lines on it. See that? And now when the black lines line up one way do, 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 teleporting teleporting and if you just line it up just right they're all gone and then it moves to the right spot and then they all reappear so that's the theory trick is trying to adjust these I'm just pushing this over a little bit see and here's the limit switches so like that'll be all the way to the right all the way to the left and um, I forget the exact how you adjust it but something to do with maybe these screws so you just got to kind of find the sweet spot where they're either all gone in on one switch and all there on the other switch. I had a heck of a time doing it on my old Star Trek, but see there, they're all mostly gone. But maybe there's some sort of other, other thing I can do other than just left and right. Anyway, but when I sold it, the guy that got it, I think it was like one of his first pins, he's like, oh, I got it all figured out. It's like, what? I struggled with that for like an hour never got it anyway so that's how the holography thing works so and what is this anybody figured out this yet did i point this out last time no i don't think i did does that look like anything like the inside signature it's like almost a big d and a couple something else Hmm. What does this say? I don't know, but any of you Trekkies out there know what that's all about. It could be worth one million dollars. All right, I think what I'm gonna start with, I was gonna go in the head and deal with this burnt connector. But I also should clean up that fan too. 
that, uh, how is that connected? Oh, just a little connector there. So, and four screws, so I could really take that off and clean it up if I wanted to, which I may. It's kind of pretty gross. But anyway, what I want to do before I go in and out of the back box 50 times is look at this door. Pretty typical, but it slants to the right. Look how much space we've got right here. And then look how much space we've got here. So this screw is really supposed to be in the center of that hole. And then this latches to close it. I gotta actually pull the screw out more. So I'd like to see how the door is just catching on the screw. That's how leaning down it is. And you can even see the hinge at the bottom left there is really tight. Go up to the top, it's got a bit of a gap. So I'm gonna kind of torque and tweak and adjust the screws and just see if I can get the head to sit a little more level instead of leaning down. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Okay, so originally this screw was missing, but I did find it on the speaker along with some other screws, because it's magnetic, right? Um, so that was a nice discovery to find that original screw. So with kind of like using whatever room I had with these screws here on the hinge, and then a little additional just brute force, I was able to, look it. Boom, get this guy all happy. I got the screw adjusted to the right height. And, oops, we're latching all happy now. So now I can get in and out without a fight. All right, so I'm gonna deal with the fan and that connector next. All right, the fan is removed and I mean, <laughs> the opening in the back is like a little circle here and a little circle here. How effective is that fan really? I'm not so sure. Anyway, I'll clean that mess up. I mean, look at the back. There. There's that little opening. Well, it's a little gunked now, but I guess it's something. But here it is, a little crusty, so I probably could just soak the whole thing. These electronics should be fine, um, but maybe I'll just take the time to undo these three little screws. And then uh, feed out that wire, then I can really clean that up without messing with the electronics. Oh, my dryer is uh, buzzed at me, so time to deal with the laundry. Hey, check this out. The very first original London Ontario Pinball League shirt design and my high score initials. Ick. Hey, you've seen this recently if you've been watching. Powerhouse Pinball. Thanks again, Julie. Then this guy. That was a Christmas gift. Cleveland Pinball. Hey, we were asking what year that was last time. 2015. That was a cool show. I think I made the playoffs. Made past the first round, then got whacked. And, uh, I got a stain on this shirt. I don't like it. But I like the shirt so much, I can't bring myself to throw it out yet. It's good working in the basement pinball shirt anyway. Well, that, I think that was another Christmas gift from Jamie. Christmas gift from Jamie. Christmas gift from Jamie. Okay. There. 
some socks and undies, and then I am good to go. Well, I started removing screws, and it has dawned on me. <laughs> I don't know if it's dawned on you yet. There's no fan blade. So, that must have, like, went in there, and then maybe screwed onto the other side. No, I don't know. Maybe screwed into here or something. Because these were the mounting screws. Anyway, um, that ain't going to do anything. So, I don't think it was doing a whole lot in the first place. So, A, I'm going to LED this bad boy. And therefore, there will be less heat. And B, it's not in an arcade where it's going to be turned on for 12 to 14 hours a day. So I'm getting rid of the fan because it is just not required anymore. So bye-bye. In the garbage it goes. All right, now let's degunkify the inside. Okay, now a little cloth on the inside, and then I'll do the back side, and that will be good to go. All right, connector, I'm coming for you. I got my Molex housing, my crimper, my wire stripper, my wire cutter. I think this is the right size Trifuricon terminals, 22 to 26 gauge, 0.156. And I've got my little key plugs there. So this is the culprit. That brown wire ain't looking too healthy either. So I guess the brown wire and the yellow are the main suspects here, but they're all guys are guilty by association. Okay, those were the incorrect terminals. It is the 18 to 20 gauge that I needed. And I actually got my soldering iron out because that brown wire that was the first pin there it was really, really toasty and crispy. So I actually cut it back a couple inches and then just added some extra wire, soldered it, shrink tubed it. I didn't have brown. Well, maybe I did, but I had green really close by. Same gauge. Uh, got the two yellows into the same um, terminal there. So that is now all good to go. And I've got lots of room to plug it in. And now I got to go to do some stuff. So that'll be the end of this video. But hey, you know, that's how we eat the elephant one bite at a time. Thanks for watching.